Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, with another match from the SNF Qualifier Tournament. We shall be watching a 1 versus 1 on Argentan Crossroads. We shall be watching Magpie's Flight flatting away for the 2nd Infantry Division in what is starting to look like a rather improvised combat force. Opposing him shall be Freestyler leading the way for the 116th Panzer Division. Having caused a dangerous breach in the American lines, clearly forcing them to commit an overly large force of engineers. And that tended to be rather a last-ditch effort for the Americans, because engineers were not like the German pioneers. They were not combat troops. Pioneers, on the other hand, besides being engineers, were also sort troops, and a rather elite one at that. Engineers, on the other hand, were basically sort of reserve riflemen if it came down to that. So there's a quite a difference right there in terms of magnitude of things. We are seeing the engineers heading up there, engineers heading right there. Of course, he's also hoping to see some of the map initially. And of course, perhaps with enough munitions, also equipping a lot of his engineers with flamethrowers. And that way, hoping to use the larger numbers equipped with flamethrowers to overwhelm the German positions and burn out the crowds. We are seeing a bit more of a spread, though, on the other hand, from Freestyle. As some folks guys following up, probably going to connect the strategic points while the pioneers focus on the fuel. And hiding in the cemetery, securing the munitions, admiring the scenery. Wondering who is it's putting down fresh flowers. Capture complete. The point is on me now. Heading up there, and we are looking at a considerably heavy engineer star. This is the six engineer star. That's I don't actually think I've ever seen that one, to be honest. Minor engagement up here, the engineers forcing away the pioneers, a bit of grease guns going on there. Numerous engineers moving towards here, might be trying to sort of Move up at the same time. I mean, if he wants to work this, he needs to actually pull in several engineer squads at the same time to basically overwhelm his opponent. Otherwise, he risks basically just getting gunned down by the Wehrmacht. And right there we go, two squads moving in. While the third one is moving in to secure the fuel point. Not entirely sure that will go. And there we go, already two engineers are down. The engineers are getting gutted. They are definitely not meant for this. And we're seeing a Schwimmwagen rolling in. More engineers are pushing in, but another squad is also close to death. I mean, this is just not looking good. He's yet to kill anyone. Another engineer squad down. Another one run off. Already there, four engineer squads have been rendered less than useful in combat. And that ought to be an indicator of the state of mind or situation at the moment. He might, of course, still continue seizing points, still harassing Freestyler. And there we go, going for the fuel point, going for the munitions. Very close back and going for a weapon support center. I think that might be a bit late. Might have actually been a bit idea to sort of just try and rush for a motor pool as opposed to follow up this up with or get a barracks up and get some riflemen to add in. Fuel point rendered neutral. No victory points have been secured yet, but now the folks kind of are on to job. Pioneers right here, or engineers, not the pioneers, are getting shot at quite a bit as well. And now, in fact, seeing the supply, so why he even bother with the weapon support center seems a bit of a quandary, a mystery, a riddle to be answered by Magpie's flight. If he decides to actually answer it. Army now holds the point. There we go, securing this. Ah, come on, Frank. Shrimbug doing a bit of aggressive patrolling. Folks going securing in the center, keeping within support range. Freestyle are making a bit of a counter push. Engineers still lining up again. Flamethrower has been equipped for one engineer squad, and we are seeing an observation post going up as well. And Schwimmbank getting absolutely overwhelmed by engineers. Nine of them charging in. The Schwimmbank finding way, and another squad moves in from the rear. He's also got another mission for another flamethrower. And we are seeing the pioneers moving in there. They could get cleared out by the engineers in a rather short amount of time, and the folks are rushing in. To lay down the fire on the engineers and the squad gets an upgrade, rushes into the house, perhaps. And the pioneers are right there, find themselves run off as well. Ah! Moving in though, engineers getting gunned down, brutally and without mercy. Popping into the house. Squad down. Burning the full grenadiers a bit. Other flame for a squad moving and the shrimp magnet exposing itself a bit to the 30 caliber. There you go, point secured. And going in with the shrimp magnet with a flamethrower. 
Doing a bit of damage there, cooking it lightly. There you go, a bit of, again, messing up from Fraps, sadly. Not sure what's going on with it today. And I don't have much time for a delay. As at this stage, you'll probably aware I've been pre-recording a lot, which means casting twice a day, for quite a few days, actually. And also, it means I don't have much time for such matters as delays or problems from Fraps. Motorpool goes up. We'll probably be seeing an armor cut very soon. We are seeing a cut Krieg Bass going up for Freestyler, who's probably also divine what's going on, due to the fact that he's only seeing engineers, though he still gets an MG42 up, but still very, very light tier 2 for him. Very light. Incredibly light, in fact, because again, he knows he has to expect an armored car rush, in which case he needs to rush himself for the Krieg Bass and secure himself a pack. Engineers are on the move. Fox guns going in from the west. Engineers going into the center. MD42 not quite able there, holding up in a market stall. And the Schwimmmann gets absolutely overrun. And the MD42 could risk getting flanked. Oh, the engineers could also risk getting gunned down and suppressed if they're not careful. They are not bulletproof. Engineers inside. The house definitely not in a good condition either. The Schwimmmann getting toasted. More fire dropping down, engineers running off, getting gunned down while the others are left behind a bit, wondering what's going to happen to them. And now they're just hiding, actually slightly crying, wishing he had not been left behind. Perhaps might want to consider actually retreating. But no, he makes a run for it into the house again. Pack 38 out, of course he might spot that one. I think he did. In which case, Magpie's flight knows he can't just rush in the armored car, or at least he knows where he can rush it in from. Yeah. Securing the center of the Victory Point Lumber Yard. Attacking the Pioneers over the armored car, rolling in, in fact, has to be careful. He m oh, and I thought he'd seen it, perhaps he hadn't, after all. Either way, that one definitely did not work out. And a 50 caliber up as well. Pack misses. <laughs> now a double time. He might try and lay down a Greyhound man right in front of the base. He might just hope to do some damage with the Greyhound. And there we go, another pack out, so a bit too late there. And now the armor can there we go. Panzer Faust does not knock it up, does not even damage the engine, trying to sneak out through the side. But I fear it will not be enough. It is simply way too open. And of course, setting up where the armored car is going to be, not where it is. And there we go, out of control. And blown up, becoming all of a sudden a very, very expensive lawn ornament. And also, not very pretty one. Unless you do so happen to fancy blown up greyhounds, in which case it's the world's best lawn ornament. Volsko is advancing, another armored skirt going up there. Sniper actually now coming out. Panzerfaust on the armored car. The engineer combat group having a bit of trouble there. Or well, the engineer company from the 2nd Infantry. Shrim Magnet firing a bit away as well. Quickly summoning the, the armored car for anything that could be traded in it for munitions at headquarters. Like expensive whiskey or all of the sorts of things. Like spare parts. Engineers run off, and there we go, the sniper is out. Doctrine chosen his infantry. He could consider getting for the left hand side and getting some rangers out. That course be interesting. There we go, we also see some grenadiers joining in for the 116th Panzer Division, allowing the offensive to continue. But now the front line has stabilized us a lot more the initial shock. And why did it go with all the way there? Well, anyways, the initial surprise and shock with the engineers has been lost. And now the question is for Magpie's flat how he actually now does some more damage again. And now the observation post might go down, and there we go. Armor coming in, snipers adding in. Trim Magnum moving in from the other side. Trias ending going up. He's probably hoping to do some reconnaissance of Magpie's base. Sniper getting off another shot, perhaps. 
All those suspect that observation post will be going down. There we go, Canadiers shot in the face. And Spring Magno moves in from the other side and the... Oh, the... Sniper's forced to run into the house and this could be his death because he's much more exposed from all sides. Now the reason why I used to want infantry. And that was quite costly for Magpies. Let us have a look at Freestyler. Who's gone for defensive, defensive. A lot of players of the Wehrmacht actually went defensive during the tournament. Interestingly enough, or lazily enough I suppose, could be another argument. But there we go, engineer force moving in. Flamethrowers galore, lots of grease guns. Greyhound staying at range, of course probably not wanting to run into an anti-tank gun. Spimagnin, there we go, for the fun and pops up. Fosco score on the run. And now we go damage engine. The Schwimmark is lost. Finally goes down to some vengeful Americans. Had enough of that nasty thing. And the armor car still at a tasteful distance. Oh, stays at it. Not appearing from out the barn. Probably again worried that something in the shape of a pack might try and knock it out. It looks like someone was trying to do some handiwork there. And with that, we do see that Freestyle has gone for his own response. He's going straight for the battle phase. He's going to get some panzers. And he's going to panzer that bastard Magpies quite solid. Another sniper out, though, for Magpies. Not giving up in that department. We are ready to fortify the perimeter on command. Though it should certainly be a surprise for Magpies when he sees the first panzer roll out. The enemy advances. And currently all he has is one armoured car that can even do the slightest of dented. Which is never really a good thing. But he's advancing nonetheless. Several packs out. That's good. We're losing territory. Well, the only one armoured car to worry about, really. So rather limits as to what good that can do. These replacements are Already Magpies is losing a lot of victory points. Wondering why he actually went for this. Again, he might have hoped for some sort of early advantage, but that did not quite work out. Pants command up, and we are seeing Rangers being called in to reinforce the engineers. Some slightly tougher and more well armed guys, and there we go, engineers quickly dropped by the MG42, one permanently. Venice Fultz is moving in. Forward supply lines are And a bit of sniper fire getting the full space. Engineers moving up on the right hand side. Engineers taking a hit. Full is hiding in the building, providing a bit more overall line of sight. Full here. Cook go down, and the sniper gets him. Engineer squad down. Had a bit of a loss there in infantry. Two free stylers. He's down to two squads. But we are seeing the Ostwind flak pounds on the way. He could actually have gone for the Panzer IV. But he felt like he wanted something more anti infantry, I suppose. But at the same time, the Rangers, if they can get off the right shot, actually have a larger chance of knocking out an Ospin, since that Ospin has a lot less health than a Panzer IV. Rangers moving in, and they are suppressed by the MG42, although the sniper might try and sort that one out. Fire up, running into the house nearby, good move. Sniper actually suppressed. Packs moving in, Rangers taking up position. And there we go, MG Gunner shot in the back. And he seems quite a bit surprised at it. Looks like another sniper might be on the way. He seems rather largely unaware of what's going to come in now. Ustwind Flakpanzer. Rolling in. Now we go opening up on the Rangers. 37mm anti aircraft gun firing away. Taking out quite a few Rangers rather quickly. And probably rendering that sniper a bit useless. And now he's actually finding where at the building. He's probably hoping to avoid that. Mac Pass continues to stuff further troops in it. Like, say, Rangers. So he's set himself on to demolishing it using his pack. That is definitely one way of doing it. And there we go. Two snipers up. Kind of he is. Getting rather swiftly cut down. Panzer IV to fill up the Ostwind. Troops not quite reinforcing back at base. And 
and now the Ospin is trying to get the Greyhound. And the Greyhound actually does a bit of damage to the Ostwind. Mostly by hitting the weaker side of the armor. And there we go, actually another hit. Rangers also moving in. There we go, another rear hit. That's alright, but not really the sort of thing you ought to do with the Greyhound. Rangers firing up, hoping to get off some shots on the Ostwind. Pretty risky business. And a nice attempt up here by Magpies, but is stopped by an MG42 again. Victory points not really in the hands of the Americans. And Titan gun out to help deal with the Ostwind. There you go, the Panzervor also rolls out. And a Greyhound swiftly rolls in, actually knocks out one foot Grenadier. Sniper's doing a bit of patrolling, Rangers not really in good condition, still going for the victory point. Light armor ready. An attempt at the central victory point, swiftly foiled, and a mine goes off. Quite the shot, and now the Panzer Force moving in. Unsupported though, and there we go. Quickly hit by an anti tank gun. Bazooka also hits nicely, almost knocking out the Panzer IV. And now the anti tank gun couldn't fast risk knocking it out. That was a bit unfortunate right there by Freestyler. Armor Khan, on the other hand, might also go down if it's not careful. But also seems to escape. And another Ostwind rolls out. No additional infantrymen as of yet. Another anti tank gun. Ostwind moves out on a slightly more western bound path. What could it be up to? A raid on the American base. Not necessarily the best thing to do when you're an Ostwind. Another one moves out. Takes quite a hit there. And again, there we see one of the great weaknesses of the Ostwind. It has considerably less health than an actual Panzer. And the machine gun in place right here is getting knocked out. Oh! Ostwind exposed to the rear to the Rangers. And the anti tank gun. Very close to getting in that Ostwind, very close going for the central point. Snipers sniping what they can. Rangers are trying to hunt down the Ostwind. Main gun destroyed and... Oh, destroyed engine. This is pretty much the end for the Ostwind. Unsupported on a raid. It gets knocked out by the Rangers. A tragic end. And there we go, out of control. Might result in some veterancy for these Rangers. Would be odd if it didn't. Sniper fire going on here. Engineers. And there we go. Veterans one for the Rangers. Engineers still advancing a bit too far in. Getting knocked out. And Titan and also moving up. Ostwind here taking damage. Could get flanked by the Rangers. But the Rangers actually moving back. Train force. Veterans and looks like Magpies and Orthodox force is actually doing considerable harm to Freestylers force. Half track on the way, might be some Stugas of action there. Panzer for repaired, Vetsons you want up for that, good. Of course right now would be a nice move if Magpies went up there with some ranges and anti tank and began flanking Freestylers falls right here repair bunk as well, good. There you go, that house is completely gone. And the half track is out, and there we go, Stukas of Fus. <coughs> Whoops, hang up. And I take on away, and we are seeing the Rangers hang up position there. For a bit of reconnaissance. Spinning things out a bit. 
More fire on the building. And back to map, highest flight. Ospin, another Ospin at least being sent out once more, perhaps on a mission of flanking business. Another Ranger score called in, adding some more tougher infantry, and this time around, looks like he's actually giving them some submachine guns. And there we go, the first rockets fly in, setting one house quite much on fire. And setting this garage a bit on the well as well, fire as well. Ostwin slightly moves up, could expose itself to anti-tank on fire. And there we go, run off. He might try a flanking maneuver. Or what might he go for? There we go. Those several hits on the Panzer Fork getting swarmed by Rangers. Another hit to the sides, which could actually not resist Bazooka fire. Just about. And rockets flying from the Stukas of Fuss. Two out now. Rangers moving in. Snipe of fire. Sniper dead, rockets knocked him out, anti tank quite not pointing in the right direction. And we do see a full retreat right here. He went for the Panzer IV, but perhaps, you know, the Stuka Zafusis might have been the greater target. Greyhound quickly moves in. No mining on the flanks, no pushing up there either. And the anti-tank and also moved anti-tank and open up from the American side. Ospin on the right hand side. Oh dear, oh dear. Bit of his going on here and there. Another sniper out for Magpies. Perhaps you should consider something a bit more suited for dealing with those half tracks with the rockets. Ostman dolls are moving. Central victory point swings back into the favor of 116th Panzer Division. Their assault has been stalled by the engineers, but their forces are taking quite a bit of damage now. And a flag 88 going up. And the Pioneers working on it, getting sniped. Pioneer squad down. And the Ospin moving in, taking hits from several anti-tank guns, rockets going down. And the Ospin destroyed engine, rockets down, sniper almost down, Grenadiers getting shot at. Rangers moving in, the Ospin is tragically exposed, and so, no, flak, 88. And so are the half tracks actually, if the Rangers continue in. And there we go, a bit dangerous right there, sniper's following up. And there we go. Flak down, off map combat group ready, grenade going in against the rangers, killing a few, and there we go the rockets again. And sniper down, he needs to be careful, another sniper down. Stukas who's definitely doing their job. Very close to getting them, and perhaps they should have been his main priority rather than the other things. And ranger squad almost goes down. Engineers basically just rush into that by more time for the anti-tank guns to get out of there, but definitely some heavy losses. And there we go, the engineer squad is down, and things are generally not looking very good for Magpies and the 2nd Infantry. Though they have managed to pretty much knock out all the armor. The main threat still remains, and that main threat are the half tracks with the rockets. We can pretty much sort out his engineers, snipers, and anti tank guns. So, in that department, Magpies in a, is in a considerable amount of trouble. Speeding things up a bit. He's probably not going to pull very much on this until he gets that off map combat group, and. There we go, manpower forward is ready, rangers, some of them reinforced. Will he call it in? There we go. 
We do see a tank destroyer, two rifleman squads, and a squad of rangers. Gaming magpie is actually considerable force in attacking if he uses it correctly. In particular, if he could overwhelm some of the in packs with his riflemen, he could quickly recruit them and turn them against any half tanks or panzers. Well, the Ultimates down do now see a Goliath hiding in some of the craters. Rangers here getting rocketed. Veterans here too. Huzzah! And the half tank actually dodging a lot of anti tank and fire directed at its rear. More on the way from the Panzer Command. Need something? Looks like another push by Magpies up the center using some of his freshly arrived infantry from another division. Oh, Goliath exposed itself, got knocked out. Tanks trying on the other hand, also getting hit a bit. And there we go, Rangers overwhelming one of the anti tank guns. Half armored car goes down to concerted enemy fire. Engineer Rifeman spotting another anti tank gun, could sort it out. Anti tank gun decrewed. Tank destroyers should probably move in against the Ostwin and the half. Well, the half tracks, they're pretty much the main priority. Artillery could get called in on the bunker, although, of course, it's defensive. And there we go, Artillery is getting called in. Range is not doing too well. Tank destroyer not too well either. Anti tank gun still there, though. Assault with the Rangers has stalled. Though he's still continuing onwards. And the half tracks once more escape. Now veterans are doing even. And these rangers, oh, rangers squad down, rangers squad down. Main gun destroyed and not looking well at all. And a bazooka left behind for the Germans to seize. An attempt at knocking out the bunker. Almost successful, but not quite there. Oh dear, oh dear. Now the first guys also have their own anti-tank weapon. Not quite a panzer effect, but it'll do, it'll do. Until considering what it is that Magpies is throwing against his opponent. Not necessarily the most intensive thing. Anti tank and sorted out. And an off map combat group. Mortars, tank destroyer rifle, and a heavy machine gun. And a bit of harassment from freestyle towards the right hand side. With the Bazooka Volksgrenadiers. Tanks are trying to deal with that, although that could easily have gone bad for that one if the Volksgrenadiers had been in the right position. Bit of Bazooka and Panzerfaust. And the rocket half track getting a rather exposed. And another Flugzeug up by Canona going up to provide heavier anti tank coverage. Clearly, not getting called in due to a worry about aircraft. <laughs> Situation is a bit of a stalemate. Ravening up towards the west. Maud sitting up close to the center. Hair machine gun covering the right hand side. And there you go, a larger push going on, but there is the Ostwind. And there's nothing trying to deal with it. Mortar round doing quite nicely over here. Victory point secured, render neutral all now, in fact, for freestyle. I meaning only Magpies has at it. The Sukas fly against the Ostwind. Rockets also go away. Not entirely sure what they were intended to hit. MG setting up, Attila going in on the MG and the Ostwind, Rangers caught out in the open and the flak opens up as well looks like two repair pioneers went down, that was about it actually and a wreck got further wrecked before Freestyler was able to actually salvage it for munitions oh what a shame Westwind moving westwards. Enemy 
And a larger engagement around centre. And there go Tang this road rolling in. Could get the Austrian, could get the flak panzer and decommission it. But at the same time, there's a pack nearby waiting to pounce as well. And of course, mortar rounds falling down on the front against killing most of the squad. And I suspect we might be seeing some counter artillery right there. Both half tracks fire, shattering everything but the mortar. That's quite impressive. And the house is also a bit on fire at the moment, including the roof. Whoops. Must been holding up the center. No further armor being sent in at the moment. No additional infantry either. And there we go, the Ostman rolls out. And subjects the riflemen to nightmarish firepower. Bunker going up there, probably going to be another repair bunker. Concerning all the vehicles and his so far lack of a medic bunker. Bit of resources being floated there. Bit of quiet. Another hit from the mortar. Killing more false grenadiers. And the grenadiers right here getting exposed to Howard's of fire. So far most of the shell jacks seem to be missing. Doing an awful little damage. But the Austin sorts in what the half tanks could not do. And looks like another off map comet group has arrived from Magpies, adding in more riflemen. Looks like he is lining up for a major assault on the western victory point instead. No, he's actually going for a medic bunker. He's actually going for one. That is quite the surprise. Normally you would not see a medic bunker at this late into the game. Losing territories. But, not to complain, not to say that's a bad thing. He's going for it anyways. Lots of rockets, though in this case not doing much. And there you go, the assault is pushing in, the anti-tank and has been spotted. Not entirely sure there's a tilly for it. Ostman getting assaulted, tank rolling in, but the main gun is destroyed and it goes down. Not the best assault right there for Pivowski, anything but. In fact, Rain is continuing in. Will they get the half-tracks? No, they seem convinced again on the Ostman, ignoring the rocket half-tracks. Anti-tank and recruit by American crews now. And the flak is itself also quite exposed to an direct assault. Panzer IV though is ready. Lots of bazookas flaring. Rangers are dying. Mortar rounds going down on the medic bunker. For the fallen and pops up. And there we go. The Panzer IV rolls in at the same time. An attempt at seizing the munitions point up there was thwarted. As the Ostwins shredded the engineers and anti tank get the well destroyed. And the Rangers are not doing too well either. This is looking pretty terrible for Magpies. And another anti-tank gun is lost. Now there's only the mortar left. And that did not go too well either. And knocked out. And more rockets this time directly against the American base. And another off map coming group getting more rangers, riflemen, another tank destroyer, and a mortar. And the machine gun placement finally goes down. Rangers are sent forth, in fact, the rifle now also without not much left. And the anti tank are once more quite exposed. With the tank destroyers, yes, but this time actually managed to get out there safely. The and this pack is not even being recruited either, but it's not in a good condition either. Big two points. Oh, slowly more leveling out, but it's still nowhere near. 
EQ. Rifleman and Rangers are suffering in the center due to heavy fire from the Osman and the Panzer IV. And the rifleman over here might in fact get killed through grenades and shots. And these two are still there. They have not been dealt with. Panzer IV on the move, more mortar rounds, and the mortar spotted by the Panzer IV gets sorted out. Veteran D2 up for the Panzers. And there we go, good night. Rocket, oh, directly on the rifleman by the Trier Center. And definitely looking to be a slaughter of Americans at this stage. Though Magpies does seem convincing and still turn this around since he's still sticking around. Perhaps he's homing for one right government combat group to provide him with what he needs. Two tank destroyers followed up by a rifleman rangers. Or perhaps something else entirely. But I think his major problem is still he hasn't really been able to sort of deal with the half tracks. And they're actually doing quite a bit of damage. And another Osman going in towards the American base. And clearly Magpies is going for another off-map combat group. At the same time he's going to lose the supply yard. Come on Magpies, fix it. No, and he just lost thusly. The benefits it gave, which of course includes decreased upkeep. That was definitely not good at all. And more rockets. And another thing shall be going down soon. The headquarters is on fire. The and then we got another off map combat group. It looks like someone was scattered over here. Probably some pioneers. Went down to the 30 caliber. The Sukas tank destroyer. Desperately trying to get the Ostwind. Grenadiers and Fulskens on the run. Panzer 4 quickly moves in. Ranger squad probably going to go down. Half tracks also getting out of their mortars. Actually, been recruited by the Fultz Grenadiers. And there we go. Rather limited counter offensive by Magpies. Just enough to force the Germans out of his base. Definitely looking none too good. Victory points is running down. More rockets. And another Ostwind out. Looks like someone sneaking in for a desperate grab at the victory point. <laughs> and there we go all of a sudden. Rather lower upkeep after the supply went down. And the ranger side over there. He could still call in artillery, but he hasn't seemed to have done that. Again, there's been no real focus at some of his greater threats like the flak. Tank destroyer getting blasted. Artillery called in on the panzer, but instead he just forces them forwards. And certainly they do take some damage, but all they're able to deal out a lot more. And there we go, tank destroyer down. Rangers getting blasted with 37mm anti-aircraft gunfire. Squad down. Half tech's moving through the artillery. Actually take one of them almost down, but at this stage it's pretty much too late. Very, very little left for magpies. And GG. Good luck in later games. Nice sportsmanship right there. 
But definitely one of the considerably oddest starts we saw there from Magpies. We could certainly see why it might have worked, but he also saw why it didn't work. Partly the snipers were a bit too exposed without proper infantry support. But I also generally think he should have, you know, gone f for the armor car early, and perhaps he might then, if he really rushed for it, might just have had a chance against Freestyle with an armored car rush. Otherwise, I think the problems were largely he focused on the wrong thing, like not getting the flak, but also initially not the half tracks when they were considerably more exposed and could have gone down faster. Instead, they were able to do some damage, knocking out the vital snipers and the anti tank guns. Had that not happened again, he might have stood a much better chance against Freestyle, and Freestyle might have done so well. On the other hand, nice move from Freestyle to rush straight for armor and basically just try and crush magpies under that. So. There you go, hope you enjoyed this match. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own? Or provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane, saying cheers.